Hi everyone, welcome to BAMP's webinar, how to use Pinterest to drive website traffic and build your brand. Today we're joined by two very special guests who are going to share their insider tips and knowledge to help you improve your Pinterest strategy. Sophie Shepherd is based in Australia for Pinterest and oversees the strategy, education and creator relationships across influencers, publishers and brands on the organic content side of the business. And Janelle Whitty, who is a BAMP content creator and blogger specialising in fashion, beauty and travel. She has built a strong audience on both Instagram and Pinterest, where she has over 400,000 monthly unique viewers. And me, I'm your host, Lauren from BAMP. I'm BAMP's head of content. Okay, thanks so much for joining us, ladies. Thanks, Lauren. Awesome to be here. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Okay, so 2020 has been a strong year for Pinterest, I think we can all agree. Uh, during lockdown, the platform has reported increased users and record levels of engagement, as we all look for inspiration and escapism while stuck at home. There are now 400 monthly active users, that's 7 million in Australia, 15 million in the UK, 5 million in Japan and 90 million in the US. Since COVID, searches and new boards created are up 60%. So it's clear that the platform is a lucrative opportunity for both marketers and creators, if you know how to use it correctly. And that's what we're here for today. So Sophie, let's start with you. For those who might not be so familiar, what is Pinterest all about? And how is it different or similar to other platforms that our audience might use? Thanks, Lauren. Firstly, it's so nice to chat today. Um, well, Pinterest has continued to grow, particularly during these times, as you've said, and we believe that's because ultimately we're offering something different. Pinterest is a visual discovery app, and we think of it more as personal media rather than social media. People don't go there to post about news or politics or see family or share photos of what they've already done. Rather, they're going there to dream about what could happen in the future. And it's about creating the best version of myself, not my selfie. Our mission is to bring people the inspiration to create a life they love. And we often hear feedback that Pinterest is called the most positive corner of the internet. And if you think about it, you know, no one comes to Pinterest to create a board of things they hate. And now more than ever, that's really important. We don't just want people to scroll through Pinterest. We want them to get offline and put into action what they've planned. People use Pinterest to find ideas across life's big moments and small, from what to cook for dinner, how to decorate their homes, like adding that new home office these days, beauty trends, what to wear and how to style their look. Pinners come with a purpose. And they have that perfect mindset for discovering creators, just like everyone listening today. They want your content. They want your ideas and your expertise. They want that inspiration. And without creators, none of it would be possible. So I'm really excited to share more today because Pinterest is focused on creators now more than ever. And a lot of you may be used to using Pinterest as a resource tool to find inspiration and then share it on other channels. Uh, but the really exciting thing about how we're evolving as a platform is that we're a channel for creators to publish that content and to grow their audience. An important difference for this audience is that content on Pinterest can be so evergreen. And the average life of a pin is 105 days. So I think that's always one thing that content creators and brand love to hear as well. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that if you're sort of spending a lot of time creating content as a content creator or as a marketer, if you're investing your money in content, I think that's a really attractive uh, benefit of Pinterest, the fact that your content can live for so much longer. Um, and you're so right 100%. about being a positive part of the uh, internet as well. I think at the moment, trying to get away from the news cycle or having something really positive and creative uh, to focus on, I definitely have felt myself gravitating towards uh, Pinterest recently. Um, so Janelle, let's get your uh, perspective here because I know that you have been uh, Pinterest on, on Pinterest for a while. How long have you been pinning and what do you like about it? I think I've been on there since about 2012, but I think the last couple of years I saw it as a more of a business tool. So I took it a bit more seriously. Um, 
and I just, I mean, obviously I love it for the inspiration that I can find and then being able to share my content and um, for it to drive so much traffic back to my site. I can't not love it. <laughs> and what sort of content are you pinning? Um, so it's mostly like approachable fashion, uh, street style type stuff, and then home decor and travel and beauty. Um, yeah, like a real mixture. And is that a more broad mixture than you would share, say, on your Instagram or something like that? Yeah, specifically um, Instagram, I think over the years, I've been known now more for fashion and beauty, whereas before, when I first started, it was a full mixture. I'd share food and things like that, which I just don't really do now. So I'd do that on Pinterest instead. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably nice to have a bit more flexibility there as well. You can kind of have each corner of your, your interests out there. Um, what content do you find performs best for you out of that lot on Pinterest? Um, I think it's mostly the kind of approachable, like really simple fashion ideas, like how to wear jeans and stuff like that. Um, and it doesn't have to be like full on trend based it's kind of like after the trend has moved on from the fashion scene um that's where sort of things still pick up when it's more approachable on pinterest um, but there's also like travel and beauty is also pretty evergreen as well nice yeah i was going to ask you about evergreen content because sophie mentioned it there sort of like the longer life cycle content do you do you find that's the case for you is there any pins that you're like oh they're still they're still performing for me yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I suppose I see it more on my blog when I start to think like, why are people looking at this post from like two years ago or longer? But it's literally from Pinterest because um, those pins just keep going. And yeah, you, you don't even have to think about it. Sometimes I can like not create blog content, but there's still that Pinterest traffic coming um, to various like blog posts. So yeah, so that's it's a really good bonus. <laughs> Absolutely. And I suppose that's that, yeah. so good. And I yeah. guess that time investment, that initial time investment, that can be returning for you for, for quite a long time. Um, but how, how long do you spend on Pinterest to kind of, I mentioned there that you've got around 400,000 unique viewers and I know it drives a lot of uh, website traffic for you. How much time investment is that? I mean, there's times that I'm just sitting on the couch at night doing it for like 15 minutes while I'm watching TV or something and I'll just be pinning other people's content into the boards that sort of align with mine. Um, but then if I blog post as well, I make sure to pin all of those and then I'll read other people's blog posts with a similar sort of, um, a similar sort of topics and I pin some of those pins and put them in. Um, yeah, so maybe 15 minutes a day but there's there's times where I will do a lot less but yeah on average 15. Yeah that's that's not bad at all is it? Okay so Sophie for creators and marketers who are thinking about just starting out on Pinterest what's the best way for them to figure out the type of content that's going to resonate with their audience because of course Janelle probably knows that she's got sort of uh, fashion-minded followers but yeah what about, what about for others? Yeah, great question. So there are a number of ways to discover content ideas and, you know, how to inspire others on, on Pinterest. If you're new to Pinterest or you're using it, but you're using it through a personal account, um, the first thing to do is, is switch to a business profile. This will give you analytics for your pins and we always recommend reviewing these to you, so you can see, you know, how your content is performing and, and what's being shared so you can really lean into what's working. Um, you know, what's getting saved the most, repinned, close-ups, meaning, you know, someone's actually clicked to open the pin. Um, as a side note, switching to a business profile also gives you access to features that aren't available to personal profiles, um, most notably being video pins. Um, we'll talk a bit more about that, I'm sure. Uh, but back to ideas for, for content that will resonate on Pinterest. Um, you know, think about how you can leverage moments to give context to creative that you might already have or be planning for. You know, everyday interests, seasonal holidays, Father's Day coming up, um, milestones, cultural moments, they're going to give that extra relevance to your content. You know, think cooking moments, home decor, birthdays, back to school, Christmas, even a lunar eclipse as, you know, something you can tie your content to for extra relevance. 
I also always recommend checking out our Pinterest 100 trends, which you can find at pinterest100.com. Uh, to here, you'll find themes that are trending from the year all over the world. A lot of platforms like to do a look back at the end of the year. We like to look forward because uh, we know that pinners are planners and they're getting excited about what is to come. Uh, we're also excited to be testing a trends tool uh, as well. So you can discover today's trending ideas across most of our popular categories there. And we'll follow up with a link to make sure you guys get access to that. And creators can also sign up for our newsletter. It's tailor made for them. And in that they'll receive a bi-monthly update on content categories where they can learn about ideas that, you know, we're personally seeking inspiration on from, from the community every single month. And we'll follow up again via you, Lauren, to make sure everyone attending gets an opportunity to sign up for that list, um, as well as the links to the, the trend tools and the reports. Yes, we will definitely send those around. I think obviously with all those millions of users, I think Pinterest is such an interesting sort of trend barometer and just to have a look at like what people are pinning, it's, it's so, so interesting. Um, so Janelle mentioned there that she repins content when she's hanging out watching some TV, but she'll also upload <laughs> some of her original content. Um, so what's the best approach there? Should be, people be uploading their own, repinning? What, what's best? That's a great question. And it's always good to, to have a balance. Um, and a lot of you are probably used to repinning other content for inspiration or, or planning, but Pinterest will definitely work hardest for you with fresh content and new pins. You know, why focus on pinning content from other people that links to their profile and their channels when it could be your pins that sit in the boards of all those other people and inspiring others, right? Uh, we've seen creators have success with creating fresh pins using assets they already have, um, posting similar images that they use for A-B testing or other angles that weren't used from photo shoots and just varying the text overlay on the same image and, and creating fresh pins that way. You know, you want to think about creating content weekly um, to engage and grow your audience. That's going to make the system work the hardest for you. If you've got posts that are timely or you want to space things out and you know you don't want to have a flurry of pins going up all in all in one day, you can use a scheduling tool. You know, we have a great one internally, um, a pin builder tool where you can schedule up to 50 pins at a time. Or if you prefer, you can use a third party tool like a Tailwind or a Hootsuite to, to schedule posts ahead of time. Or, you know, Janelle, I love your strategy of just doing the, you know, the 15 minutes every day while you're on the couch. That absolutely works too, to make sure that you're getting um, frequent fresh content into the system. That's definitely going to be the, the best strategy. There you go. You're on the right track, Janelle. Did a lot of that sound sort of uh, familiar for you with your uh, process? I mean, we know, we know you're on the right track already. But yeah. Those sort of things that you do? Well, yeah, I've never used a scheduling tool before. I've like, like had people rave on about them to me before, but I've just never really actually done it. Um, yeah, I think other than just like going through your old pins, like you say, or your old photos, because if you're like me, you might shoot 200 photos and then you use one for Instagram and like six on your blog. And there's like so much content sitting there that you can just re-edit in a new way or edit and just pop up on Pinterest and link back to those blog posts or to your website. It's, yeah, that's all part of it. But it also has to have all of the keywords. And um, I think that's the other part of my process is really like making sure that it's all searchable. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's a really important part of it. I think we, you know, make it sound very easy if you're just sitting there repinning, but obviously a lot of thought needs to sort of go in the captions um, and things like that. So I'm going to be getting, I'm going to get your top tips off that in a moment. Um, so Sophie, if people like Janelle are on the right track, uh, what, what kind of uh, content do you think is performing best on Pinterest at the moment? And have you got any insider tips for brands or creators who are already on the right tracks but are looking to expand their interest? impact on Pinterest? For sure. I mean, each vertical and audience are, are going to have differences. So as I've already said, your, your analytics and your business profile will be your, your best friend to help you create content your audience loves. But yes, I mean, there's some general things that, you know, we would highly recommend. So everyone get ready to take some notes. <laughs> uh, 
the steps to success on Pinterest kind of come down to three things. The first, as I've already said, create fresh pins. The second, uh, and Janelle alluded to it already, optimize for discovery. And the final thing is, you know, you want to build an audience that's loyal and, and passionate about your content. So to get specific on, on some tips there, they're going to make a really big difference. The names of your boards and the title and description of your pins can really make or break you. And they, this relates to that second point on optimizing for discovery. You know, remember the mindset of the pinner and think about it, you know, Pinterest is this visual search engine. So your board descriptions and the words that you use will really ensure that your content is surfaced to pinners searching for ideas like yours the most relevant and inspiring ideas win. So for example, if you're in the food space, you wanna think about having different boards for categories like breakfast recipes, healthy lunches, quick dinner ideas, versus having one broad board called recipes or food, or even you know having a whimsical name that doesn't mean anything to those people searching for new ideas, you wanna avoid that and go specific. The Pinterest algorithm is one thing to remember, um, but you know, people are reading these, so keep them simple. Clear sentences work best for both pinners reading them and also the Pinterest systems. So include those strong keywords, but write for humans first, you know, robots second. Um, and just keep it natural, avoid keyword spam. It just have a naturally describing sentence, not just stuck full of keywords. The other thing I would say is mix it up. Don't just stick with static pins. Um, we have alluded to video before, but you want to curate a mix for video pins as well, because video is still relatively new on Pinterest and it's an amazing way to capture pinners attention and to drive meaningful engagement for you. Videos can tell such a rich story for a variety of categories and we're seeing success across wellness and fitness, tutorials on beauty and fashion, home DIY projects, cooking recipes and more. And we've got some exciting insights back on video as well. You know, from what we're seeing, we're recommending videos have a length between 11 and 59 seconds. Seems to be the sweet spot in terms of length. And you wanna really think about having that compelling cover image that's gonna capture people's attention as they're scrolling through their home feed. And you've got to assume, uh, ensure that the video works for mobile as well. So vertically, 80% of pinners are using their mobile device to access the platform. And lastly, as always with Pinterest, for video, same as photos, think about that title and description with really strong keywords. Now, the other thing as well, um, you know, whether you're posting videos or static pins, it's, it's really important to, to think about that eye-catching image or video cover photo, but, you know, really follow the specs. Make sure you're using high quality vertical images that are gonna stand out. Um, but we recommend a two to three aspect ratio because otherwise you're going to see your pin truncated. It's going to negatively impact your performance. So make sure you follow the specs so that you really look the best as people are searching. The last thing I would say is include your logo and branding. Um, as pins continue to be saved and even go viral for, you know, that evergreen nature for so long, you want to have your brand on that pin. It's always helpful as it continues to be shared through the Pinterest ecosystem. And also remember that text overlay is allowed on Pinterest and can often help tell a better story for pinners as they're searching for new ideas. So that's a few tips there. Um, Janelle, I'm sure you're gonna have, have some great ones as well. And um, I know you've got a lot to say on keywords as well. <laughs> they are some really good tips. Yeah. I know I can vouch for the video from ourselves at BAMP. We uh, have been experimenting with uploading some cinema graphs and videos from our uh, creative community and they are by far and away sort of performing the best out of our pins. So I can, I can definitely vouch for that. And I think that's really good advice for people who are wanting to expand um, their impact. And so they should as well, because I think Pinterest is becoming such an important marketing tool for so many people. Um, you know, you can include a description, a call to action and a link for every pin that you create. Um, so they can be a really powerful tool, whether you're driving to e-commerce or your website or download link or, or anything like that. Um, so Janelle, could you tell us a little bit more about what Pinterest has done for you in terms of uh, like as a website driver uh, versus as like, maybe first using it as a mood board and how that sort of evolved for you. Yeah. Um, well, initially it just helps me to visually categorize ideas, especially if I'm feeling like I've got so many things I want to do, but I'm a bit overwhelmed. 
that like really helps just to narrow things down. Um, and then I make sure to fill the boards with descriptions and key word heavy sentences to make sure that those boards are really obvious. Um, but because it's a, the way I see it is it's a image search engine, like in a way. Um, so I use it as a business tool. That's the way I think. And it dri drives so much traffic. And I only just realized this the other day is that I've got less than 2000 followers on Pinterest and I have over 40,000 on Instagram, but they both send the same amount of traffic to my blog. Um, so I, I honestly, I just realized how much more time I should be spending on Pinterest because there's those people there. And traditionally Instagram was always trying to keep people on the platform, whereas Pinterest are like, cool, go just like find what you need and head off to that website because we know you'll come back, um, which is amazing. And yeah, I guess there's, there's more of an engaged audience on um, Pinterest as well. Um, because of that, they're, they're there for a reason. They go, then they come back. Um, yeah, and so for my website, I'm posting a lot of blog posts and then I include links, um, affiliate links to whether it's to buy a pair of jeans and I might get a couple of dollars through commission from that affiliate website. Um, so Pinterest is really driving traffic to the blog and then driving out for me to get sales. Um, and I can also, like you say, the call to action, I can include those affiliate links directly on my Pinterest pins as well. So it's amazing for increasing that little extra bit of commission that I get. Absolutely. Yeah, that's amazing. It's such a, it's such a powerful tool, isn't it? Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so let's, let's get on to some advice for the last, last 10 minutes of the session. Let's, let's give some advice from you ladies. So Janelle, in terms of takeaway tips, how important do you think keywords and captions are and how do you optimize them? They are the most important thing. Um, so <laughs> it's time consuming to sit there when I'm writing a blog post and I'm thinking of all the, it's the same for SEO. I'm thinking of all the keywords and these unique descriptions for every single photo, but it just pays off so much. Like I will have this blog post I put up two or three years ago and it's still going on Pinterest just down to that keywords, which is um, amazing. Uh, so the way that the way that I approach it, and I think this is vital, is that you have to use it. Um, you can't just put up a nice picture. You have to write that description in a way that's not just keyword, keyword, keyword. It has to make sense and it has to be readable in that human way rather than approaching it like a robot would read it. Um, so, for example, if I take an outfit photo, I put a description in that includes the location, the occasion, the season, the description of the clothing, the brand. Um, so for example, I might say like how to wear mum jeans, but then I'll be like spring outfit idea that I wore to brunch in Sydney as well as a full description. Um, Cause you never know what people are searching for, but often they are searching for mum jean outfit ideas or how to wear mum jeans. So if you think of it that way, then that is, what is vital for getting that traffic back to your site and then growing your Pinterest account as well. Um, yeah, I guess if I, and if I put up something that I haven't put the time into for writing those descriptions, nothing happens with it. It's just a pretty picture that just sits there and it's a waste. That's so interesting that you can really tell, tell the difference between ones that you want <laughs> And it's great to have that example as well, because that just goes to show it's, Full of, full of keywords, but like Sophie said, still makes sense to a, to a person, not a robot, which is what you want. Absolutely. Um, yep. how, how important is it to stay active on Pinterest? Are you sort of on there little and often? Um, I, think it's, I think it's important to just be on all the time. And I think even when I was first uh, kind of working out Pinterest, I was noticing that like, I get a notification if somebody I follow follows somebody new or they start a new board and things like that. So I keep seeing their name pop up in my notification feed. So I think like, okay, I've got to start new boards fairly regularly. I've got to be following new people to get my name then in other people's notifications and have them be like, Oh, what are they doing? And check out what's new with them. So I think the more 
the more that you use any platform, the more that you get out of it. Um, but yeah, using it smartly and making sure you use things that are relevant to people is really vital. That's such a great tip for sort of keeping top of mind. That's brilliant. Um, okay, so Sophie, can we try and get any insider tips off you? Uh, is there anything new uh, in Pinterest for creators or anything that might be coming up that's exciting and you can talk about? Absolutely. Uh, the first is at mentions, um, being able to mention something in, in pins for tagging collaborators and sponsors. So that's a feature that's going to be music to a creator or brand's ears. And I'm excited that that's, uh, that's now available. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, the other one I'm really excited about is Pinterest recently launched the Today tab. Uh, this is to provide a new source of daily inspiration with curated topics and trending ideas. Our goal is to help people on Pinterest find new types of content and provide an interesting look outside of the types of personalised ideas that they normally find um, curated for them on their home feed. So this feature will be a way to discover inspiration uh, that you haven't necessarily searched for. And you can find the Today tab at the top of your home feed in either iOS or Android app and tap it for new ideas each day. We're slowly rolling this out in different countries. We're live in the US, the UK, Canada, Japan, several other markets, Australia, uh, coming very soon. Um, it's gonna include recommendations on a handful of topics and trends each day based on what people are searching for. And we're excited to start with, you know, curating ideas from the Pinterest team based on, on what we're seeing. But we're also gonna be featuring guest editors uh, so I'm excited that we can partner with amazing creators on Today Tab from those, you know, daily topic features through to guest takeovers. It's going to be awesome. And are there some opportunities that creators might not be aware of to be featured in those editorial features and things like that? Yeah, so whether it's um, Today Tab or our home feed placement that we call Spotlight, uh, we love to feature creators. Um, we actually just set our themes uh, for August that we're looking to feature people on. And there's some really great ones no matter where you live. Uh, for example, in Australia, we, we love our coffee uh, and we're looking to feature pins around brewing the perfect cup at home and bringing that cafe fun into our homes. Uh, and for the UK, we're talking about summer garden parties and the outfits that you might have worn to music festivals. Um, these features can be a really wonderful way for, for those listening to grow your brand. So keep an eye out for instructions and the themes after this webinar so you can get involved. And we're excited to feature as many of you as we can over the, over the next month. Awesome. Well, we're going to be uh, sending out uh, some of those uh, resources so everyone can uh, have a look at those and any, anything that Sophie mentioned there you'll be you'll be sent so let's go over some uh, key takeaways so number one stay active on Pinterest um, as Janelle said a little can go a long way if you pin regularly and as much as you can uh, your activity will always show up um, in your followers notifications and keep you top of mind um, think practical titles uh, and discoverability. Use terms that pinners will search for so you can be included in their search results. So no whimsical titles if you're using it as a business tool. Um, and use your analytics. If you upgrade to a business account, there's loads of information about how your pins are performing so you can double down on what's working well for you. Uh, and consider testing video. It's an underused format on Pinterest, um, but can generate a lot of great engagement. Um, so whether you're in content or in marketing, try repurposing some of the videos or cinema graphs that you've got there um, and see how that works for you. Well, thank you so much uh, for watching and ladies, thanks so much for sharing your insights. Um, I hope that was helpful, but if you struggle to take any of those notes, um, then don't worry, we're gonna be emailing around a Pinterest approved sheet of tips. Um, and also you should check out Janelle's um, work uh, just for a great example of best, pra best practice in action um, across Instagram and Pinterest. Um, yeah, so thanks so much for that guys. Um, and if you've been watching this and um, thinking I need some beautiful content to kickstart my Pinterest strategy um, then get in touch with us at VAMP. Uh, we put you in touch with amazing creators like Janelle who can start creating content for you quickly and easily via our platform. 
um, yeah, so give us a shout if you have any questions to follow up. Uh, if not, thanks so much for watching. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Awesome.